fresh meat. I'm Lance Felchuk for Arrow in the Head's The Black Sheep, where we discuss and defend the genre's most divisive films. So, I think I've been handling this pretty well. I'm trying to eat at home more, taking care of my body, a little stress-free reading, the whole nine yards. In times such as these, most people say things like, relax, don't read the news. But here's the deal, well, what's life without a bit of chaos? I'm going to branch off and go down a different path and say, f*** it. Let's lean in and go all the way. Now, without a theater release to tie into, the question becomes, what to do this month's episode of The Black Sheep? Hmm. Keeping with the gloom and doom and a bizarre quarantine Easter a week ago, let's go with some biblical end times with 1988's The Seventh Sign. It's been a while, maybe high school, since I last gave this a watch and I only remember bits and pieces. I mean, this was the lawyer era of Michael Bean. Well, I mean, well, I guess it's just this and Rampage. Then again, the Ziggy Stardust era lasted only a couple years. So basically, I'm trying to say this is the Michael Bean Stardust period of time, if you will. And he was all right. Man, does Rampage deserve the black sheep treatment or what? Damn fine, unsettling serial killer flick. The Seventh Sign is about a woman desperately trying to keep her unborn baby safe, while a scary-looking German stays in her extra room, uh, Kato Kalen style, spending his free time bringing on the apocalypse via the Book of Revelations. We start off with Father Fucci in the Middle East, investigating the site of a giant freeze. The prophecies are becoming true, and he seems like the only one putting the pieces together. He also walks in like the FBI agents in Die Hard. Yeah, I'm in charge here. Not anymore. As the father is popping around the world, Carmen San Diego style, the great Jürgen Prochnow. Jürgen Prochnow. Jür Jürgen Jürgen Prochnow. Listen, if you saw my last name written down, you couldn't say it either. So Jürgen Prochnow is David Bannon, who will always be Sutter Kane to me. Is one step ahead, breaking seals and setting the whole plan in motion. The Seventh Sign is a big movie played small. To me, more as trouble conceiving, and there are hints about previous miscarriages. This film is mostly framed around trying to give birth to a healthy baby that will bring on the end. The big events play in the background, and it's done in a way that it never feels awkward. I could have seen this twisted the other way though, where we side quest our main character trying to have her kid in the middle of everything crumbling. Kind of like Godzilla, where the characters were sidetracked in favor of destruction from a giant camera shy lizard. Who the f kills off Tim Watley 20 minutes in? Either way, that's kind of what I expected during this rewatch. I know for some reason I remember being more grand, but I like this tale framed in more of a personal way. It ends up with more heart. I've always liked to me more. Maybe it was watching Ghost with my mom as a kid, or maybe it was watching Striptease alone in my room when I was 11. Sit, God damn. God damn. Though this may not be a very out of her comfort zone type of role, I like the character of Abby and she pulls off the cute suburban mom thing pretty well. I don't know, maybe because most of my friends are having kids, or I don't know, maybe it comes with age. But her arc of trying to save her baby's life uh, got me a little sad a few times. To me, and her throaty voice was the perfect casting choice. I mean, she's sexy, innocent, yet never too tough. There was a level of vulnerability that won me over. Michael Bean plays defense lawyer Russell Quinn, who's representing a special needs kid on death row for the murder of his parents. His parents were brother and sister, executed for the word of God. His angle is to do his job and try and get him off death row, but his client, Jimmy, claims it was an order from God and won't get tested for incompetence, which would be his last legal ace of his sleeve. Bean is a bit underutilized, but uh, honestly, it's not really his movie. So his part of the tale is just mostly in the background until all paths merge at the end. Now, I do like the idea of him caring about his client, Jimmy, and that he desperately wants to have his life spared. Russell is a good guy, and Bean does his best with what the script gives him. He's good. He's really good. I also like that he's not tough here. I feel like, you know, Michael Bean's known for being a badass. But in this movie, he's just a hardworking man trying to live the American dream. These Black Sheep videos have always been part review, part retrospect. And I like to get into actual scenes, which at times will ruin a movie that's been out for three decades. It's a 31-year-old movie. 
And to get into what I really love, this will include spoilers. I shouldn't have to say that, but I'll be a nice guy. The quiet and menacing David Bannon, who has the face of a villain. I mean, some people, like Jurgen, just play better as a bad guy. He's not a dialogue-heavy character, yet says more than enough with an epic stare. And in one of the best scenes in the movie, she stabs him when he seems like he's about to attack. And reveal, he is the second coming. He's not trying to hurt anyone. Well, technically everyone. David Bannon is Jesus Christ. Now, I have a strict hierarchy when it comes to movie Jesuses. Coming in third is the stoic and contemplative William Defoe from The Last Temptation of Christ. Second is the more grounded and realistic Jim Caviezel in Passion of the Christ. And first has to be the soulful and passionate SOB, Ted Neely. Let's just admit that nobody came close to telling Judas to fuck off. Someone had to turn you in like a common criminal, like a wounded animal. Get out! They're waiting! Get out! But now Jurgen Prock <laughs> comes in like a Timothy Dalton slash Daniel Craig of Jesus Christ actors. I mean, I, technically Daniel Craig is the new version of Dalton, which was the dark and brooding Bond, but his portrayal of Jesus is its just a little tougher, a little more raw. I love his portrayal, as it kind of bucks the normal trend. I not only love the twist, but that his JC is just a different take that still follows the rules that are set. Then to find out, Father Fucci is the wandering Jew. I am Carter Phyllis. Pilot's gatekeeper? <laughs> he kills his old friend just to keep his secret. Immortality is his curse and will do everything to make sure Christ brings on the end of the world. All this culminates in a race against time as Abby realizes Jimmy's death will be the fifth sign. The movie builds well, and by the time things start to get epic, it packs a big punch. Like I said, this was a small-scale film, and by the time we get to the peak, it's well-earned. Father tries to stop Abby by killing Jimmy, while only wounding her. As the biblical earthquakes intensify, she goes into labor, and we come to the best part of the film. I don't know why this affected me the way it did. I guess I could see some folks scoff at it and label it cheesy. But this ending had heart. Throughout the film, Abby has this reoccurring dream. Will you die for him? Will you die for him? No! Which turns out was Father Fucci. But giving birth to a dead child is the end. So having her finally understand the question, it's beautiful. Die for him! I will die for you. Russell makes peace and gains a son at the cost of his wife's soul. It hit me hard, and I don't know, maybe it's that I'm more aware of the frailty of life, the fact that I'm getting older, or the fact that people are dying in hospitals right now, I don't know. The seventh sign may be heavy-handed for some, and at times I could probably agree. But besides being a bit dated, this was a great biblical thriller with enough heart to move you when needed. Jurgen plays a great Jesus. Demi and Bean are perfect together and have a lot of chemistry. And the story is character-driven, with enough at stake to keep you invested till the end. Life can be quick, and with all that's going on, be kind. And until next time, I'm Lance Velchek for The Black Sheep. All of Seoul.